Hello, welcome everybody to another Build Fly Go. This is day 14 of our Rio 2020 trip. Uh, you may remember that uh, we had an unexpected overnight here. Um, we were going to continue to Belang yesterday and uh, unfortunately the weather closed in on us and uh, we weren't comfortable flying through some of the big clouds coming up. So we woke up this morning and it was IFR here. Uh, the ceiling is about 500 feet. So we decided uh, there was no CB in the forecast at all, so we decided to file um, IFR to Belang, uh, to the Julius Caesar uh, airport, and uh, it turned out to be a good decision, as you will notice momentarily. There we go. Um, it's just a single layer, you know, a couple hundred feet thick that uh, you just fly through, and then we were just on top. Um, we decided not to cancel IFR, and because uh, we already had a, everything filed and we were already dealing with all of that, so we continued IFR all the way to Belang, which was, I want to say, about a two and a half hour, two and a half hour flight, roughly. Unfortunately, lots of clouds, not a ton to see here, so I fast forwarded through most of this flight. Um, I've decided to, to stop deleting segments and just fast forward them. So if anybody actually wants to see the whole flight, they're welcome to, you know, slow, slow down the video or, or some such, but, uh, yeah. At this point, we're starting to descend into um, the Belang uh, smaller airport. Um, it's uh, definitely becoming VFR. We haven't canceled IFR yet. So we're going to cancel momentarily as soon as we get through this little layer here and the airport's in sight. You'll notice it sort of comes out of nowhere. There we go. Airport's in sight. Cancel IFR. Um, nice long runway. We unfortunately didn't spend a lot of time here because we wanted to get going. We left at 6 a.m. from the previous one, so this is probably around 8, 30, 9 a.m. at this point. Uh, so we just really taxied up to the ramp, met the um, billing person uh, who told us he's worked there for 10 years and this is only the second time he's actually had to run a paper bill. Uh, the local aircraft uh, get billed because they just look up your information and they just send you a bill, but uh, international or N-numbered or any other international aircraft, you have to pay on the spot. Um, and you have to pay on the spot before you can file a flight plan. Like your flight plan has to have the receipt number or they won't let you, let you take off, which is interesting. Uh, it's it's easier than it sounds, uh, and yet un as unnecessarily complicated as it sounds, unfortunately. But, you know, hey, we get to fly here, so who's complaining? 
so at this point, we're basically just going to uh, go slightly north to get to the Amazon River, and we're going to fly down the Amazon River, and it is phenomenal. Um, unfortunately for a lot of it, we are above the clouds, uh, so I fast-forwarded those bits. But look at these greens. Oh, my gosh. Um, but, uh, you know, once, once the cloud layers are getting better, I'll I slow down the video so that you guys can see it. Um, you may be asking, is this VFR, IFR? It's a little of both. So these are ICAO flight plans. So there's an option for a Zulu um, condition, which is you begin VFR and you expect to go IFR later on. And there's also a Yankee option, right? So there's Victor for VFR, India for IFR, um, Zulu for begins VFR and becomes IFR later, and Yankee for begins IFR and expects to go VFR later, uh, which is different from how we do it in the U.S., right? In the U.S., you file one or the other, and you can change at any point. Well, you shouldn't, but you can change in the air, and it's not, not the end of the world. Um, you just request ATC to make the change or call a radio and make a change. Um, but, uh, so anyway, so we've, we filed Yankee for the previous flight, um, because we knew we were going to go IFR first to get out, and then we were going to plan on going VFR later, um, and they actually ask you to tell them when you expect to go VFR, so if at some point you know you're going to go VFR, it needs to be on your flight plan. And then you have to have a separate route on your flight plan as well for if you, at the point that you were expecting to go VFR, if you're unable to contact anybody on the radio, so then you need a separate route, which is the, if I'm unable to contact anybody on the radio and I'm going to continue IFR, this is what I'm going to do. It's, uh, I, I don't quite understand when that would be useful. Um, but I haven't done this kind of flight plan before, right? I mean, for us it was, I want to fill up, I want to file this IFR and just cancel IFR whenever I feel like later, right? Um, but it is what it is. Interesting little tidbits. Um, we can, by the way, do these same flight plans in the U.S. These are just standard ICAO flight plans, right? It's the, it's the ones that we have shifted to in the U.S. for, um, instrument flight plans and it's definitely everything that's used internationally. So uh, you're welcome to stump your local um, center people by filing a Yankee or a Zulu flight plan and see what happens. <laughs> but anyway, so things are starting to open up, so I'll slow down the video here back to the normal rate. And you can see the, the water on the right is the Amazon River and at this point it's, it's still muddy or it's already muddy, um, but keep watching it because later on you're going to see where rivers meet and there are lighter colored rivers and darker colored rivers that meet the Amazon and the waters don't mix for, I think you can see some spots here, right? Like these are not shadows, right? Like the brown and the dark, those aren't shadows. Those are just different colored waters that are not mixing and it's just really interesting. Um, we are flying into Santarém here, which is a city uh, on the Amazon River. We're spending the night at a hotel right in front of the Amazon River, and we were just like walking on the on the riverbanks um, as we walked to dinner today. And it's it's such a huge, huge river, and it's just it, it looks impressive, right? I mean, you look at the water, and the water is just different. I don't know if there's something about it. Um, but anyway, so we are. Uh, now descending towards uh, the Santarém Airport. It's a fairly large um, airport for, for, for Brazil. It seems like we've mostly dealt with smaller airports here, but this is, was a fairly uh, nice large one. And uh, when we arrived, we taxied over, um, and we were very particular to tell them that we're going to be spending the night here, and we don't want to be in the expensive area. We want to be in the cheap area. <laughs> because of the mistake that uh, the Irakajou airport made. Um, and they, you know, they, they confirmed, yes, you're in the thing. We paid our, uh, our airport fee because we want to pay that early so that we don't have to wait for that in the morning and we can file our flight plan, which reminds me I have to do that. Um, and then uh, one of the tower guys 
came like we were parked right down the there's the airport we were parked just uh, a little bit off from where the tower is one of them came out and said came to say hello and wanted to take a picture with us and had seen our videos so that was very cool thanks for coming and saying hello but uh, that's really it for today um a fairly reasonably long day five-ish hours flying um but uh, we continue tomorrow onwards to manaus and then boa vista all right please subscribe and we'll talk to you again soon